Welcome to another Sabbath day singing time in Doctrine and Covenants section 58 verse 64 it says for verily the sound must go forth from this place into all the world and into the uttermost parts of the earth the gospel must be preached unto every creature with signs following them that believe every creature look at all these creatures I have here today you guys, it's talking about sharing the gospel, right? This year, we're learning about the Doctrine and Covenants, the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, of the gospel of Christ. And what that means is we have the opportunity to share that with everyone in the whole world. Our prophet has talked about that a lot. Gathering scattered Israel, inviting all to come into Christ. So today, we are going to go on a little field trip to the zoo. My kids, at the end of the year, we have a zoo here where I live, and at the end of the year, their classes go on a field trip to the zoo. And this is, a, actually two of them went this last week and a half. So I thought it would be fun for us to visit some of the animals, to visit every creature. So at this time, the early saints just got to Missouri. Remember, go to the Ohio. Okay, now go to the Missouri. So they're in Missouri, in Jackson County, Missouri, and they find out this is going to be Zion. This is the place where Zion is going to be built. Not right away, we find that out later. But I love it because these two sections, section 58 and 59, talk about so many blessings that we can have. But there's a couple things we have to do to get the blessings. So we're going to walk around the zoo, pick an animal, sing a, read a verse and sing a song about something that we need to do to get the blessings of sharing the restored gospel, of doing the things the Lord wants us to do. So, first animal I'm going to pick. Hmm, which one should we pick? Let's grab this guy right here. Is this a cheetah or a leopard? I think maybe it's a leopard. Cheetah. Don't know. One of those. He's a cute little guy. <gasps> okay, so this says Doctrine and Covenants 58.2. 58.2 says... <clears throat> For verily I say unto you that he that keepeth my commandments, whether in life or in death, he that's a faithful, that is faithful in tribulation, the reward is the same. The reward of the same is greater in the kingdom of heaven. Those that keep his commandments. And verse 19 and 21. For verily I say unto you, my law shall be kept on this land. 21. Let no man break the laws of the land, for he that keepeth the laws of God hath no need to break the laws of the land. So it's saying we need to keep the commandments, right? If we keep the commandments, it says this, you, you get a reward in heaven. That's one of our blessings we get is a reward in heaven. Let's sing Keep the Commandments for our first song. Remember, I've got the first letter of each of the words here for you. Commandments, commandments, safety. blessings. He really will. He'll send us so many blessings. Okay, let's stop at our next animal and find out what our next blessings are. <clears throat> Ooh, I like this one. This is some a really well-known verse for these chapters. It's actually what our topic is for um, the lesson this week, is being anxiously engaged. In Doctrine and Covenants section 58, verses 27 and 28, it says, Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in the good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves, and inasmuch as men do good, 
they shall in no wise lose their reward. So I didn't pick an animal yet because I want to read the verse that comes right before this and right after this. And then you tell me which animal goes along with this verse. For behold, it is not meet that I should command in all things. For he that is compelled in all things, the same is a slothful and not a wise servant. Therefore, he receiveth no reward. But he that doeth not anything until he is commanded and receiveth a commandment with a doubtful heart and keep it with slothfulness, the same is damned. <gasps> Which animal do you think I should pick? Who's this guy? A sloth. We have a sloth here at our zoo. Okay. So this scripture, what is the scripture saying? So what, what does a sloth do? He hangs upside down. That's one of the things. He's so lazy. He can't even get himself up. He doesn't even take time to get himself up on the branch. He just kind of, just kind of hangs there, hangs out. How, how fast does, does a sloth move? Are they super fast? They're not, right? They're super, super slow. Have you ever watched one actually move around? They are very, very slow. They just take their time. The Lord is saying, be anxiously engaged. Go and do. Don't take your time. This is important work. We are gathering scattered Israel. We are helping bring in the restoration. The restoration is still going on. We can bring people to Christ. Let's do it. Let's be anxiously engaged in the good cause. We're agents unto ourselves and we can do much good. So we're going to sing Nephi's courage. Go and do, right? I will go, I will do. So we have actions to this song, not words, right? The Lord commanded Nephi to go and get the plates from the wicked Laban inside the city gates. You ready? We know all three verses. <clears throat> Get out your plates. The Lord commanded me far to go and get the plates from the wicked Laban inside the city gates. Laban and Lemuel were both afraid to try. Nephi was courageous, this was his reply. I will go, I will do the thing the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way, he wants me to obey. I will go, I will do the thing the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way, he wants me to obey. The Lord commanded Nephi to go and build a boat. Nephi's older brothers believed it would not float. Laughing and mocking, they said he should not try. Nephi was courageous, this was his reply. I will go. Let's choose another animal. Okay. Mm How about this hippo? Look at this hippo. He's a cute guy. Okay, so remember at this time, do you guys remember last time 
that he called so many missionaries to teach on the way to Missouri, right? So many missionaries. So there's still a lot of that going on. There's still a lot of missionary work going on. There's someone named Polly Knight who actually died when she got to Missouri. Do you guys remember we talked about Father Knight and Mother Knight? It's Newell Knight's mom. It's it, it's so sad. They were some of the strongest saints in the in the Colesville branch. Remember, we talked about her. She her health wasn't doing good, and they got to Missouri, and she died. But she made it. She wanted to make. It was about. Um, I read it's about a 700, 900, a nine hundred mile journey. Seven hundred mile. I don't remember. Seven hundred or nine hundred miles is still a long a long way from Kirtland, Ohio, to Jackson County, Missouri. That's a long way to travel when you're not feeling good. I'm just walking down the street when you're not feeling good is a long way to travel. But she makes it to Zion. She does pass away there. She's one of the first saints to die. Um, and I love it. The Lord says this beautiful thing to her. For those that live <clears throat> shall inherit the earth, and those that die shall rest from all their labors. And their work shall follow them, and they shall receive a crown in the mansions of my father, which I have prepared for them. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to continue on. So it says that she had faith. It talks about the faith that she had, the faith that she had to keep going to get where the Lord wanted her to be. In section 58, verse 44, it talks a little bit about faith. It says, now verily I say concerning the residue of the elders of my church, the time has not yet come for many years for them to receive their inheritance in this land. So, right? It's not Zion yet. We need to build a Zion people and a Zion place. We need to get our hearts right and then build up the land. Uh, except they desire it through the prayer of faith, only as it's appointed unto them of the Lord. So we learned a song a long time ago called Pray in Faith. I pray in faith. Um, it was probably last summer that we did it. And I had the words P-R-A-W to remind us of the four things that we do. Heavenly Father, Thank him for blessings he sends. Ask him for things that we need. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, right? And there's four things we can do with our body. We can close our eyes, fold our arms, bow our head, and kneel down, right? My four by four for prayer. So let's sing, I pray in faith. visiting some animals in our zoo. Let's come down here to this ostrich. Okay, so we've talked about a couple things that we need to do. We need to keep the commandments. We need to go and do, have courage to go and do. We need to pray. There's so many things that can bring us so many blessings. He will send blessings. He will send blessings. I want you as you're studying this week to look for those blessings. A lot of times it's hard. We get caught up in the Oh, they're moving from here. Now they're moving to there. Now there's a mob. Now that someone's dying. Uh, there's so many hardships. And, and it talks about it this week. There are. There are tribulations. Sometimes the blessings don't come until after a little bit of a hard time. But the lessons we learn from going through those hard times are worth the blessings that we will receive. Okay. So remember, these missionaries were taught, were told to teach, by the way, on the way to Missouri. At her ostrich. Okay. Now we're going to go to 58. And this is verse 40, 47, 59, 63. The reason why I have four of them is because I love how many times he says this. If I can get to the right one. 46, 47. Okay. Wherefore, assemble yourselves together. And they who are not appointed to stay in this land, let them preach the gospel in the regions round about. 
and after that, let them return to their homes. Let them preach by the way and bear testimony of the truth in all places and call upon the rich and the high and the low and the poor to repent. I like how he talks about all the people, the ones up here, the ones down here, no matter where you're at, we all need a little bit of repentance, right? We all need a little more Christ. Okay, and then 59, and, and let no man return from this land except he bear record by the way of that which he knows and most assuredly believes. Remember a couple weeks ago we talked about gifts? To some people it is given to know, to others it is given to believe. I love this because it says, to bear record by the way of that which he knows and most assuredly believes. Both of those gifts are beautiful. And whichever one you have, the gift of knowing or the gift of believing, we should share with other people. And the last one, and let them also return, preaching the gospel by the way, bearing record of the things which are revealed unto them. So he's saying, you guys have come. Now some of you need to go back home and continue to preach. Go back to your families. They need you too. There's so much work to be done. Preach by the way. We should be an example of Christ everywhere as we're going by the way, bringing people unto Christ, preaching unto all creatures. Okay, we are going to sing, bring the world his truth, because that's what we're doing, right? We are as the, as the armies of Helaman, we will be the Lord's missionaries. Stop at the first verse today. Okay, I have one. I mean, I have four more animals, but I have one more animal that we're gonna pick for songs today. So we've talked about this, right? The blessings that we'll be getting. We talked about how we will have blessings after this life if we die, right? How we will have blessings in this life, sometimes after hardship. But I love it. It talks about that we will have cheerful hearts. That sometimes we'll be blessed temporally, sometimes we'll be blessed spiritually. Um, this scripture talks about some of the blessings we can receive by keeping the Sabbath day holy, which includes a lot of things, right? Going into partaking of the sacrament, loving those around us, making sure Sunday is set apart as a special time for our families. Maybe having a different way of doing things on Sunday to show the Lord that we have a day to reset, refocus, and to keep that spirit and that dedication to him going throughout our week, regardless of the day, right? Okay, section 59, verses 16 through 20 says, Verily I say that inasmuch as you do this, the fullness of the earth is yours. This earth is full of a lot of stuff. That's a pretty cool blessing. The beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, that which climbeth upon the trees and walketh upon the earth, Yea, the herb and the good things which, which come of the earth, whether for food or for raiment or for houses or for barns or for orchards or for gardens or for vineyards. Yea, all things which come of the earth in the season thereof are made for the benefit and the use of man, both to please the eye and gladden the heart. Yea, for food and raiment, for taste and for smell, to strengthen the body and enliven the soul. And it pleaseth God that he has given all these things unto man. For unto this end were they made to be used. I love it. It talks about all the blessings of the earth. If we look around on the earth, there are so many things that are beautiful, that are pleasing to the eye and that gladden the heart. Animals in the earth, 
trees and plants and fruit and building of houses and the things, the material things that we have too, right? We've been so blessed to live on this earth. We need to take care of it, right? And I love it because at the beginning it talks about if we do all these things, if we're keeping the Sabbath day holy, if we're keeping the commandments, if we're praying in faith, if we're doing all of these things, then we get to be one of those that gets to go to the supper, the very last supper, to sit down with Christ and Heavenly Father. I love at the beginning it talks about the feast of fat things. <laughs> Makes me think of Thanksgiving when you sit down and you've got all this good food and family and love and just the feeling that, that goes around there. We're going to use a monkey for this one because when you're gathered with family, my family's kind of monkeyish sometimes. They like to goof around. Okay, we are going to end by singing My Heavenly Father Loves Me. I actually haven't done this song with you guys since we've been doing virtual singing time, but I love this song. It talks about the earth, the many blessings that can be ours by the things that we do. By following the commandments, the blessings can be ours. Whenever I hear the song of a bird, reverently. We can know that Heavenly Father loves us by looking around at all the blessings he's given us. Just the fact that we have bodies, that we're alive today. And I love this. I thank him reverently. In section, I wasn't going to share this scripture, but <clears throat> in section 59 verse 7, thou shalt thank the Lord thy God in all things because he's the one that's given them to us, right? I am so grateful for this earth on which we live, for the creatures, for my body, for the chance we have to share the gospel. I hope that you all have a wonderful summer, that you get to go visit some animals, go do some fun things, and I will see you next week for singing time. <laughs>